So I want to talk now about something called the Shell Theorem. Um, and this is uh, purple. Well, yeah, well, let's just start with black. And then I like to start with black and then go to, um, you know, go to colors as things happen to so sort of, you know, feel like I'm being a little extra special. There we go. Let's see. There we go. All right. So um, the Shell Theorem, uh, this is something Newton proved using calculus. So imagine you have a shell which is a, a spherical shell, which is basically like a, a hollow sphere. Uh, it's got uniform thickness and uniform density. So imagine, say, you know, an orange rind. Um, and I'm showing a cutaway section, you know, here. Um, and these are supposed to be like a little 3D, you know, like orange peel inside rind lines, you know, so like the striations inside, you know, supposed to look really 3D and artsy. Um, but anyway, so you have, you have this shell. Um, and it's got some total mass m, so say mass. Uh, I'll make it capital M. Why not? And you know it's got some radius or whatever. Let's say the radius is uh, let's see, choo -choo 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 -choo. and radius we'll call it capital R, and that's the radius. And then come on up, Sid. Come on up. Cat wants to get up again. Um, so what's the gravitational attraction? You know that this shell exerts on some other object. Well, Newton proved um, using uh, you know calculus, which which he invented. Um, you know, it's like he invented this thing and then he had to go around using it to do stuff, just to prove how awesome it was. Oh, and people would say, oh look, it's Newton. Uh, you know, I bet I bet he's going to try to solve our problems with calculus. So um, he you know he probably annoyed people. Anyway, um, so. If we have an object that is outside the shell, what he proved is that this has this attracts um, as though the mass of the shell was concentrated at this point. So, um, if you have that thing there, then uh, this then you could just use like this this distance here, this radius from the center of the shell, or this r distance from the center of the shell, in your gravity calculations, and find you know, say for this is mass little m, then uh, force on this was equal to capital G times big M times little m over R squared. Yay. Okay, so um, so so that's, you know, and then we can draw the force there, I guess, if we want. Okay, so um, that's, that's all hunky-dory. What if you're inside the shell? Well, as it turns out, um, there's a very interesting uh, answer to that, and by interesting, I mean um, interesting to me, but I'm, I'm going to make it interesting to you, I hope. So let's say, um, I'm, and we're going to prove what it is. So let's say you are inside the shell, or, you know, me or you. So here's, um, and you've got a flashlight. So, that you know, there's you. You've got a flashlight. So let's say there's, there's you, and here is your flashlight, which has, actually, that's not a good, that's not what I want. Let's see, a little less, come on, there we go. Okay, so there is your flashlight, which is shaped like a, a I don't know, a megaphone or something. And the flashlight shines its light out. And there's some like um, spreading open angle for the flashlight. So let's call that theta is the angle of the flashlight, okay? Uh, or th theta is like like the, the angle across like the cone of the flashlight. So that's like, um, you know, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's the cone of the flashlight. And say you shine your flashlight and it hits a wall and there's a distance D between you and the wall, okay, so there's, here's the distance D, and it hits a wall. Um, what is going to be the radius of the circle that the flashlight makes in the wall? And I'm going to call that, oh, we'll call that little r, okay, so I'll say little r here equals what? And so it turns out that the radius of the circle, which is like that, is equal to this distance D, you know, I'm assuming this is distance to like the, the focus point of your flashlight or whatever so it's like coming out as a perfect cone but you get the idea okay so there's your flashlight you're lighting up a section of the wall with radius little r and it turns out if that is if the theta is that angle there then um actually you know what i'm going to make that angle two theta just so i can make theta like half of it so that i could say that sorry to do that to you but so i can say r equals um d times tangent of theta okay so this thing comes out, boom, 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 and tangent of theta is this thing. So then what's the area of this, of this circle? So I'm going to call that A light. 
this is the area of the little circle of light you projected onto the wall. It's d tan theta, so I'm going to call that, um, you know, in the area of a circle, of course, is pi r squared, right? I hope you guys remember that. And that is going to equal uh, pi times d squared times tan squared theta, okay? So this is the area um, of the light that you shined on the on the, uh, the on the wall. With me so far? Okay. Now, um, what I'm going to say is, remember the shell has a little bit of thickness, but it's uniform, and it's got a uniform uh, density all around. What I'm going to do is, I want to ask, what is the um, total mass of of shell here? behind the light, okay? The total mass of the shell here behind the light. Well, um, really if we can just say it's proportional to the area, right? I mean, isn't it obvious that if it's a uniform thickness and your flashlight hits a certain area, that the amount of mass of the shell behind it is going to be proportional to that area, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call this M light, and I'm just going to say that's equal to K times A light, okay? And in fact, I'm going to def so so k is like some density per unit area. I'm just I'm just saying it's whatever the like the the amount of mass behind one square meter of shell, say you know, is like that. So um, so I'm going to call that. So then you know, a light is k times pi um, tangent squared th theta times d squared. Now look, if you're using the same flashlight all the time. I mean, pi is a universal constant. That's obviously going to be the same all the time. If we're using the same flashlight, then tan squared theta is always going to be a constant. You're not widening or dimming or you know narrowing the beam. So I'm just going to take this k and define and call that. I don't know. I'm going to call it. Uh, let's say. Um, oh, uh, let's see. What's a, what's a letter that we don't use much? Call it h. Okay, h times d squared. So really, the mass. I'm just defining h is equal to k times pi times tan squared theta. The point I want to get here is that the mass of shell um, lit up by your flashlight is just proportional to the square of the distance to wherever you're pointing your light. Okay? Now, here's what I want to know. What is the gravitational force due to this, this chunk of shell that you're lighting up? What is the gravitational force this chunk of shell exerts on you? Okay? So, uh, I'm going to call it F light, and that is going to equal um, mass of U. Uh, so I'm going to call it M Y as mass of U. So this is you know U. That's U. M Y as mass of U. Um, that's Y O U U, not letter U. Okay. Um, times the mass of the stuff you're lighting up with the light. Okay. Divided by the square of the distance between you and this stuff. Well, what's that? That's just d, right? So d squared. Okay, but m light is h d squared, right? So m y, m light we found was this this constant we defined called h times d squared over d squared, which means that the force from uh, the f light, the force you get from the lit up mass, is going to just equal your mass times this constant h we've we've defined here. So let me make this this sort of, sort of gather this up here before we take the next step, and say what we've shown here is that you take your flashlight out with its fixed angle beam, you shine it anywhere, shine it anywhere on the surface of the shell, and I'm not talking about you having to be in the middle and always having the same distance. Everything I'm talking about anywhere. So you could be off center, you could be right here, and just shine it this little distance d, and the gravity you feel from the thing, the stuff you light up, or the, the gravitational attraction from the stuff you light up, is just going to be proportional to your mass times this, this mass density of the shell. Okay? Um, if you, so, so no matter where you point your flashlight, you are going to feel the same gravitational force. You get the idea? Because if you point it here, now your, your light is lighting up a bigger area of the shell, because the area is bigger, it's going to be proportional to d squared. So if you shine it an area further away, you shine it way over here, you're going to have even bigger light. But the distance, um, because the distance is increasing, and because the the uh, force from that is proportional to one over the distance squared, that cancels out. So no matter where you shine your light, 
the the stuff that you're lighting up has the same attraction to you. If you're shining something further away, you're lighting up a lot more orange rind, but you're also it's also further away from you. So it's you know gravity gets attenuated by that. And so what this means is you can shine your light in any direction, no matter where you shine it, and you are going to be pulled the same amount in each direction, which means the total uh, force on these things, if we sum up the entire gravitational force on you from the shell, well, every, every no matter where you shine the light, you can say, I feel a force that way, but then you can turn around and shine the light the opposite way, say, well, I feel the same force that way. So here I can say I feel a force time in this direction, but then I turn around and shine the light over here, and I say, oh, same force there. So no matter where you shine the light, you find, you find the same force, and all these forces are going to add up to zero. So um, what we've shown um, in our sort of, you know, not quite mathematically rigorous way, but I, th I think an intuitively sensible way, is that no matter where, where you shine your light, or is that, is that you know, no matter where you are inside the shell, it is not going to exert a gravitational force on you. What that means is you could have a shell, I mean, the, the entire Earth could be hollowed out. If we hollowed out the entire Earth and had like shell Earth here, you know, somebody outside would still feel some gravity. Maybe not as much as, you know, if there were a full Earth, because there wouldn't be as much mass in there, but they'd feel some gravity. But somebody inside, no matter where they are, will feel no gravity from the shell whatsoever. Anywhere you sit in the shell, you will feel no gravity as long as you are inside the shell, and it's a uniform spherical shell. So, there you go, that's the shell theorem. Uh, outside, if you're outside the shell, you feel gravity as though it's all at one point, just like a, a normal, you know, sphere or whatever, but if you are inside the shell, you feel nothing. You feel no gravity from it at all. Interesting little fact.